Hey everyone, I'm Aria and in this tutorial I just want to go through how I created this art piece using geometry notes. And before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to another video. I just recently saw this video and thought that some of these techniques were really useful, even though our creations are very different. I found this video very helpful in getting me started with this piece. Okay, let's get started. So let's open up a new scene and select our default cube. Then up on the top left, I'm just going to click and drag to add a new window. Click here to switch the editor type and head into the geometry node editor. Then click new. In this case, we're not going to use our default cube, so I'm just going to hit delete and add an icosphere. I'm going to leave the radius the same, but I'm just going to add another subdivision to this. Next, we'll hit shift A and add in a dual mesh node. And you'll see that it immediately changes our shape. So I'm just going to mute this for a sec. And what this node will do is pretty much make the opposite of whatever we have here. So if I just highlight all of our vertex points along with some of these faces, you'll notice that as soon as I turn this on, anywhere that there was a vertex point, it now has a face. And where the faces were is now a vertex point. So it's essentially doing the opposite of what we had before. Next, we're going to add an extrude mesh node, so shift A to search and type in extrude mesh. Now you see that we've extruded the faces by one. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. Then if I mute this, you'll see that all of these faces are have been extruded. Next, you can search for a scale elements node. And what we want to do is scale these faces. So if I type in 0.8 and hit enter, you'll see that the entire thing scales. And the reason why is because we're scaling all of the faces at once. So I'm just going to mute this. Then you'll notice if we go back to our extrude mesh node, we have these two outputs here, top and side. And for our scale elements node, we have our selection. If I was to take our top and connect it to the selection, then add our scale elements node back, you'll see that it's just taking the top faces and scaling them in instead of all of the sides as well. This is most of what we need, so we're just going to be duplicating these. So let's click our extrude mesh, hit shift D, and we're just going to drop that next in line. It's now scaling up everything on here again, so what we want to do is utilize our selection again. So if we just go back to our extrude mesh node, we can click and drag this top output and connect it to our selection. If I mute this, just the top faces are being extruded again. In this case, we want to scale inward, so instead of having an offset of 0.1, let's type in minus 0.1. And now you'll see, instead of moving forward, our faces go inward. Let's grab our scale element and shift D to duplicate. Then we're going to change the scale value to 0.5. It scales everything down, which is not what we want. So again, we can just grab our top output and hook that up to our selection. Then you'll see now, as I switch back and forth, that it's just scaling the inner face. We're just going to continue on with this a little bit further, so let's duplicate our extrude mesh node. Again, we want to use our top output as the selection. Then, let's set this to point 0.1. Let's duplicate our scale element one more time. Again, we're going to connect the top to the selection, and we can leave this to point 0.5. Then, one more time, we're going to duplicate our extrude mesh, but we're going to do something a little bit different this time. Instead of using the top output, this time we want to use our side output. So I'm just going to click and drag this to our selection. Then just scale this down a little bit. And now if I mute this node, you'll see it's all of the side faces that are being extruded. Next, we want to subdivide our mesh. So I'm going to search for a subdivide mesh node. And it doesn't really look like it did anything, but if I go into wireframe mode, you'll see that it basically just took everything and subdivided it by one level. Then we're going to add a subdivision surface node and set this to 2. We just want to add a shade smooth node. Then the final node that we want to add is a set material node. And we'll come back to it later. So let's just quickly add a join geometry node. I'm going to hit shift A and add an instance on points node. Then I'm going to take the output from our dual mesh and connect it to the points input. Then we can take our instance output and connect it to the join geometry. Let's add an icosphere as our instance, bring down the radius. You'll notice that we've got our icospheres, but they're kind of in the wrong place. So if I just quickly mute our top line here, you'll notice that this is our original dual mesh. And you'll see that all of our instances are being instanced on the vertex points. Hit Shift A and search for Mesh to Points. 
Then if we drop this in, you'll notice that nothing really changes. But if we select this here and change our option to faces, you'll see now our points are being instanced right in the center of the face. If I unmute everything up top, you'll notice that our points are a little lower. And a simple way to fix that is just by using a transform node. Then if I set the scale to 1.2, you'll see our points move outward. I'm going to subdivide our icosphere, and then we can just scale these up a little bit. Then the final thing we need to do is add a material node to this as well. So I'm just going to select our set material node, and we'll just drop this below. I also gave my object some movement. A very simple way to do that is just by adding a noise texture. You could connect this to the very first extrude. Then if I was to set this to 4D, you'll see if we change our flow value that our noise pattern changes. It's pushing these out really far. So you can just add a math node, set this to multiply, and what I'm going to do is set this to minus 0.2. You'll see as I add this in, this changes our base shape a lot. So what we can do is just disconnect this from here. Bring this over a little bit and we can just connect this into our second extrude mesh. Now you'll see it's not affecting the base of our mesh, it's only going to affect the inner area. So just keep that in mind when you're using a noise pattern and deciding where to put the effect. I just added a simple animation to mine, so I'm going to set the keyframe at zero, add a keyframe at the end, then somewhere in the middle, and add a keyframe. I also added a little bit of noise to the orbs as well. So let's add a set position node, and in this case, we want to drop it right after the transform node. Next, we can just duplicate our noise pattern and hook this into the offset. You'll see that everything kind of went off to the left. So we do need to tell our set position node that we want the noise to affect it based on the normal direction. A quick way to do that is to add a vector math node, set this to multiply, and multiply by the normal. These have gone down a little bit, so what we can do is just duplicate our math node, then set this to add. We can just set this to a value of about 0.1. The final thing we need to do is animate our noise texture. If I hit play, you'll see now that we've got a noise pattern that's affecting both our spheres and our object. Then the final thing I did was create a material for both of these, added some lights and a background. So if you want to see how I did that, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member, where I explain how I created the final look a little bit more in depth. You'll get that video along with the completed file, as well as some of the files from my previous tutorials. Or you can head over to my Gumroad page and purchase the blend file I used to create the final render. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye!